This is an assembly guide for the hexaphonic witchcraft synth. Um, right now I'm just lining up all the components needed in order to build it. And then I'll be explaining where to put what and yeah, small details about how to assemble it. So I hope by the end of this video you will have a working hexaphonic synthesizer. So this is me bending down the legs of one of the resistors and yeah you will have to do that for um, every resistor. There are 12 in total, two for each oscillator and then putting them in. The direction doesn't matter so you can put them in however you like and it doesn't need to be as tidy as I'm doing it right now it just has to make the connection I'm bending down the legs on the backboard in order for them to not go anywhere when I'm soldering and it also makes it a bit more accessible for the soldering point. I like to sort everything in, in in batches, so I do the resistors first, then the caps, then something else, and then something else. And um, this is not a guide on how to solder. I wouldn't recommend anyone new to soldering to do what I'm doing here. Um, but there are tons of good guides on the internet on how to solder. Um, yeah, but this is uh, the way I'm doing it. It's not something I would recommend for an for uh, beginners. And now I'm cutting off the legs of the components. Um, I just come as close to where the soldering was made and I cut off the leg. And there you go, it looks nice and tidy. And 
now the caps the caps I'm putting in is certainly not the caps that are in the build kit it was just uh, whatever we had laying around but it will work and you can also if you want experience with different kinds of caps and see what it does to the sound since the um, yeah the caps and the potentiometers um, affect the pitch of the of each oscillator so if you want that to go lower and if you go want it to go higher you can put in lower or higher values mm. yeah and for the last cap that I'm putting in which is this little yellow one the potentiometer connect to this cap um, is different from the others so that's why the cap is different from the others and yeah that means it will be able to go a bit lower than the others now these are the filter caps and back to soldering On the current version of the hex synth we have stereo output which means that the two lines going across one on the bottom and one on the top on the six uh, pressure pads is assigned to one uh, output each so you have a right and you have a left and you will be able to hear that very quickly when you start playing it if you hook it up to a stereo so now for the 9 volt battery clip the two wires need to come in from the top and go under the PCB then up again and into the power and the ground. This is to ensure that the wires don't rip out of the PCB um, and then it also just looks more nice. Um, in this video I forgot to show how to secure the battery to the PCB with the supplied zip ties but um, it shouldn't be too hard to figure out and I think there's also a guide for that in the in the like written guide
Now I'm putting in the potentiometers. And these can be a bit tricky to get in, but once you figure it out, it's pretty easy. Here you can also experiment with different values in the potentiometers, which will, yeah, change the sound of your hex and So the two legs I'm soldering here is just to secure it in place and then the three legs on the bottom of the potentiometer is the ones that actually connect into the circuitry. And for the chip, I will be soldering in these IC sockets. It's not necessary at all, and I actually wouldn't recommend it since it just makes the process of assembling it more difficult. Um, but I am doing it here in order for me to be able to switch out the ICs more easily. And they can be a little bit heat sensitive, so when soldering them in, I'd recommend that you don't touch the soldering point to the legs for too long. And this is the chip, and the legs uh, typically stick out a bit too much. So right here I'm bending them in just a little bit and uh, yeah I'm laying it down upon a flat surface and just gently, very gently bending it forwards so that the legs bend in a bit more. And then that's plugged in and you're pretty much ready to go. You have a finished hexaphonic witchcraft synth. You can plug in a battery and plug it into an amp and uh, listen to the witch casting her spell. Yeah. <laughs>